Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about how to experiment with the human rainbow to get new skin tones. For a few years now, I've had the human rainbow chart available for free on my blog. It's still free, but I am moving it over to my teaching website, art-classes.com. And this is a chart that's blank. You just print it out on your favorite Copic paper and then you can color it in. If you want to do this in colored pencils, you can do that. Whatever you'd like to do with this chart is up to you. And I'm going to bundle this, however, on the, the new location with two other charts. And this one is one that I made for another project I was working on to do skin and hair tones. And I'm also going to have in that little bundle, I'm going to have this page. So it's going to be new editions. It's all still free, but go over to art-classes.com to pick that up. There's going to be a link in the doobly-doo if you would like to get that PDF with all those files in it. If you're into practicing your human skin tones, the Art Impressions line is, of course, one of the best ones because they've got lots of people in them. And I'm going to show you a bunch of them in this video. And uh, there's a yoga set where they're eating cake and exercising together. What a great idea. <laughs> The old people here are hilarious and the sentiments just crack me up. I swear, Bonnie has the best sense of humor when writing sentiments. Then there's the cleanings. Yeah, because, you know, we're all into that housework thing. I'm a, one of the worst housekeepers there is, so these are particularly amusing. She's riding the ironing board. She's got the dog on top of the laundry. The other one has a cat on a Roomba. If I could teach my cat how to ride my Roomba, I would be a happy camper. That would be hilarious. And of course, cowgirls, because cowgirls are just lots of fun. So I'm going to show you a bunch of different stamps out of this collection, and I'll show you parts of their, their colorings, because I want you to see some of that. Um, not going to put all the colors on here because I just gave you all those free charts. But what I want to talk about is how to do your experimenting. And what I'm going to do on a bunch of these is start with a light skin tone. And this is a great way to work out your shading. So if you're scared of adding shadows when your skin tones start getting darker, then try this. Do them with your light colors because then if they look weird or if you want to change them or something, then you can change them when you put a darker color over it. So I started with my light skin tone, adding in some darker colors for my shadows, just getting it gradually darker. Remember, if you start getting a lot of bleeding going on, then just let it dry first, and then you can go back in and work on it some more. But as you saturate that paper, that's what's gonna make it start to, to bleed. So watch what's gonna happen with this skin tone. I'm putting a purple in the skin tone instead of just a brownish color. And look how realistic it becomes. It's almost like you can see blood coursing through her veins. She's now human rather than a cartoon version of a human, which I guess is kind of what stamps are. <laughs> They're cartoon versions of humans. But nonetheless, this is one way that you can put ad added depth into your skin tones. And when you look at the charts that are available that you can go and download, you're going to see a lot of color combinations that you may not have thought about before and well unless you were around when I posted those charts years and years ago because I did them a long time ago and I can't even find what posts they were associated with there's one of them that I know went out with a particular video but now the post is like blank so you know the internet eats things over time but I thought if I put it in a technically quote-unquote product even if it's free then it at least stays there so wanted to make sure that's still available to you. Another great resource for learning your skin tones would be the Copic Jumpstart class because it talks a lot about color theory. And I don't mean color theory in, oh my gosh, Sandy's being scary kind of a way, but color theory in terms of knowing why those purples work. It's because it's a complementary color. And there's a lot of those little things that you'll learn in that class that help you to understand color overall in a whole different way. But here you can see I've added all of the darker skin tones right over top of the stuff I already had done. Now I also knew that I was planning on doing a background on these cards. So 
if it started bleeding, I wasn't worried about it. But as I said, if you start getting bleeding or you worry that you're going to get bleeding, just leave more time in between the over layers because I'm putting a lot of ink down here as I'm slowly moving this one from being very pale skinned to being considerably darker. Uh, another little tip, the palms of the hands are lighter than the rest of the skin tone, so that's always going to help it look a little bit more realistic. And with her, you'll see others where I transformed the hair color over the period of the video as well. Uh, but with her, I didn't do that because I forgot to do her hair at the beginning, so we're just going to do dark hair on her. One thing you can do to transform hair that is drawn as like a, a white person's hair or that that texture of skin and you or this texture of skin that texture of hair and you want to make it a little more on the curly side then just use your darker marker and make little kind of stippled dots around the edge and then you start getting that textured look to the hair you can also make the hair longer by doing the same thing it's a little harder to make the hair longer when you're doing something with uh, with lines in it if you're gonna do it with lighter colors but anyway this is the first version then we moved into transforming her into a dark skinned woman and then I added in all the rest of the color for the main portions of the the scene the Roomba and the, the little buckets and things all of that stuff and then I added in finally the scene in the background and I gave her a setting I gave her a room there's a chair that has stuff on it I just kind of sketched in some stuff on the table there's another room behind there and everything and one of the things I struggled with with this one was having enough color but not too much because I had lots of great color in her and I needed to put some color around the rest of it that was not going to compete with her and yet was going to be a nice fun busy scene because that's what it looks like at my house when it starts getting messy. So the background is all in muted tones and then the red carpet just kind of anchors the whole thing and gets lighter as it goes toward the back but darker in the front. So the next stamp is the faces of those two old people. <laughs> I love their expressions, the way he's just looking straight at you and she's giving you the side eye. Both of them have their hand out and so that's going to play a part in the scene that I make. But again, I'm starting with lighter colors and I'll go darker and darker over time so that I can work out my shadows with these lighter colors first. With old people, note that they have grayer skin than younger people. Younger people have more blood coursing through their veins. They have you know, a little more under their skin, that sort of thing. So you can work with more muted colors. You can use grays or purples to shade older white people. And then add more colors into it for for younger skin types of people younger skin i guess your skin is as young as you are right it's all made at the same time when you're born and it ages at the same rate as the rest of you anyway so now i'm adding my really dark shadows now most of the time i do my undercoat my first first pass on everything i do with my lightest skin tone for that particular whatever it is that I'm coloring. In this, since I have all this other color underneath of it, I opted not to do that on most of these. So you can do it either direction, whatever way works best for you. Sometimes if you're trying for that, that base color to be exactly the color that's coming out of your marker, if you know that an E13 is gonna be your light skin tone regardless, and you don't wanna have multiple passes over it, then start with your darkest because then you're only putting one pass of that E13 down there rather than a bunch of them. Now here I was experimenting. This is another thing with the whole experimentation thing. I've got two people and I can try different things on them. He's looking really, really red. And next to her now she's looking really, really yellow. So I tried a little pink on her cheeks and it got too light because that erased the color. So I went in with some of the color that I'd put in him on her. And then I went in with a more yellowish color. I think it was an E31 to lighten up the cheeks on him because he was too red. And you can do that. Again, the Copic Jumpstart class talks a lot about those, a lot of those different kinds of things. But here you can see their skin transforming from being old white people 
two old African American people. And then I'll add in the colors in the actual stamps themselves. And these are from two different stamp sets that they were combined. And I was trying to think of a scene for them. They were obviously walking to somewhere. He's got his cane, she's got her purse. So I put him on a sidewalk in a street. I put very bare suggestions in the background of the, the little town that they're in. But all of this gave me a really nice light scene to put them in. And I made the shadows kind of follow along with where the road would be because the shadows I made go off behind them and the, uh, the road just goes in the same direction. Now let's get on to the ironing lady, which I just think is so funny. I have never actually thought about getting on top of an iron and doing this, but if my iron were strong enough, I would like to because I think it would be really hilarious. But my iron is not. It's an old rickety one. I think I still have the same iron that I had in college, which tells you a little something about me, I guess. Maybe something I shouldn't admit that I still have things from way back in the day. But I am coloring her you know, as an, an older white person and then slowly getting darker in my color. So now she's got more skin tones that would be for a younger person. So I'm giving her blonde hair. I'm doing it right on top of the gray hair. Notice that that wasn't an issue. I can color right on top of grays. Going to give her a little darker skin tone. So she's got more of maybe a Hispanic or an Asian kind of feel to her, her skin tones. Um, but I was gonna just keep making things darker and darker over time. So I went in with my browns to do her hair, and then I'm gonna go in with my really dark colors and make her African-American at this point. And just start building in my colors from the shadow areas toward the rest. Note when you're looking at glasses, glasses can either stay white as they do in some cases, or they can be a lighter tone of whatever the skin tone is behind them. Once again, I'm making her hair a little bit on the curlier side by going past the stamped line with a dark marker. I tend to use dark grays rather than a black when I'm doing that because if you use just solid black on hair, it tends to just look really garish compared to the rest of your coloring. So here we have me as an older person. You can kind of picture me getting a new iron just for the sake of riding it, maybe. I don't know, that seems kind of a silly idea. I don't iron very much, so I don't expect I will begin that at any point soon. But there you have it. You can watch her skin tones get darker. It's kind of fun knowing that I was making these images and I could make a short little video for Instagram as well with each one of these transformations happening. So if you want to see that in quicker pace, it's kind of a fun little video that you can go watch. And here we have her whole scene colored with the iron, the little stamp of the dog on top of the basket, and her, and then the whole scene in the back. Working from front to back is the way you do that masking. And I've created some dramatic lighting coming from perhaps a doorway into her laundry room with a nice dark in the background, another door maybe into another place, and my perspective is potentially off. I admit that readily, but for the most part, if you're trying perspective and you get it a little bit close, which I've gotten close here, people are going to give you grace for that. So go ahead and try it because it's a lot of fun. And especially if you're interested in perspective, the uh, Drawing 101 class at art-classes.com is where I teach a lot on perspective. I sort of feel like I'm hawking my classes in videos like this a lot, but I do get folks who want more information. They want deeper information, and it would take me hours to teach all that here on YouTube. That's why I started classes. And even though it feels weird to be telling you about all the classes you might want to try, I just want you to know that there are classes available for that, for those who want to learn more than you're going to get here from me on YouTube because I like having a place where I can get into real depth on any topic. I even have a human rainbow class that is really in depth. You have some large images to work with. We talk about skin tones and all that sort of stuff in that one. So with this particular image, I am not coloring uh, kind of over and over and starting with the lightest person and then going to a darker person, just doing one of each flavor since there are three ladies here. 
going from lightest on the left and darker on the right. And you'll notice that I put that base color down first and then I go back over with the base color again as I'm doing my blending, I'm just slowly building that up. And that's my normal way to do it as opposed to how you've seen it in this video as I started with a Caucasian person and moved to darker skin. But for her hair, again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to color it with, uh, well, I'll do both of these ladies at the same time. I'm going to color them with a lighter gray marker so that I can leave a few highlights potentially. So I'm going to give her a darker color. And then around the edges is where you can give a little bit more of that texture. So go in with some heavier color as a mid-tone and then you can go in with a really dark color which is what I'm doing here and give that a little bit more texture around the edges and as you build up these colors you're also going to get a variation in the hair hair colors those hair tones so it's going to make it look a little more realistic as much as realism as you're going to get with stamped images of crazy people dancing and stuff so here's the first image of just the skin tones of the three ladies. And then I stopped to take a photograph of their clothing and everything. And I gave them some shadows because I was trying to figure out my scene for this one. And the shadows is what gave me the idea for the scene itself. So I'm giving them a barn to dance in. I moved the light so it's more direct side light and created an opening where the only light is on them. Everything else in the background is really dark. Notice that the people that are back here are just blobs. And I gave them head-shaped blobs, but they're grayed out head-shaped blobs. And all of that perspective leads to a one-point perspective. The shadows come in from the side, so you really get the idea that there are people standing over there that you can't see. And all of that light is being cast onto the three ladies. Here's the last one, and this one I find just the most hilarious of this whole line of stamps this year because they're exercising and eating cake, which is what would get me to exercise if they brought cake. Maybe I'd go to the gym. Anybody else with me on that? Can I get an amen? Leave me an amen in the comments if you are someone who would be inspired if your yoga teacher brought treats. So what I decided to do for this one, I've already had the coloring done for everything else and saved only the people skin coloring portion because I did this one first and hadn't thought about the other way to go about this video. But I am coloring everything in here as though the cake, those candles on the cake, that's the light source, which means every object in this is going to have a different relationship to that. Some of the are going to have their light on the left, some will have it on the right, some will have it right in front of them, some will have it above their heads. And it really depends on where they are in relation to that light source. If you're interested in learning more about light sources, there's a Casting Shadows class that will talk a lot more about that. And again, the Drawing 101 class is what gives you that perspective. So all of that pointing back to that one spot kind of behind where the light source is as well. I did the same thing with the yoga mats to give them the same perspective as the rest of the room. And all that light casts onto each of the objects in the room in different directions because everything's in a different place in relationship to the light. So that is my crazy video for today. Go pick up the free chart over at art-classes.com if you're interested in that. Links to all the other classes are in the doobly-doo as well because I just want to make that available to you if you want to learn more. And I will see you guys again next time. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.